الذي خلق الإنسان وعلم كل بيان وعلم الإنسان ما لم يعلم سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العلم الحكيم وأقول ولا قول إلا بالله ولا بالعظيم وأفضل الصلاة والسلام والسلام على حبيب سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا محمد من بعثت رحمة للعالمين وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين والصحابة والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقدة من لساني يفقهوا قولي اللهم لا مانع لما عطيت ولا موكل لما منعت ولا راض لما قضيت ولا ينفع بالجد منك الجد. Without going into uh, too much uh, detail, firstly it's Alhamdulillah, the Qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Brothers were very apologetic about being late. I said, you can't apologize for something you have no control of. But we always try to look at the positive in everything. If we are truly to appreciate the topic in mind, the etiquettes of seeking sacred knowledge, or the adab, the manner, <coughs> or the attitude that one should have in seeking knowledge in general, then the first thing every individual should appreciate is Everything we receive is from Allah, sah? but the means we receive it through, that should be appreciated. As Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam has said, Lam yashkuru nas wa yashkuru Allah. Those who do not thank mankind are not, not, not thankful towards Allah. We, as the Ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam, we should be forever thankful to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam and appreciate his presence in our life as a means to get closer to Allah. All knowledge that we receive is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the teachings and the guidance of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. No believer says that we do not love the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Every believer Everyone who takes shahada and is a Muslim loves the Prophet ﷺ. But it's a known fact that individuals, I'm talking about individuals here, not groups or traditions or whatever you want to call them, individuals. Individuals differ in their love for the Prophet of Allah ﷺ. Some love him more than others. Some don't love him as much as they claim to love him. And some love him extremely and to the extent where they cannot imagine their life without him but they don't make a show of it. Because the love that they have for him وسلم, is between them and Allah. They love him for the sake of Allah. Gaining knowledge is extremely important and inshallah very briefly we'll go through the, the structure if you want or the categories of how one must gain knowledge and what is, why it's important to so on and so forth. But the foundation of everything must be the founder of the deen, the core founder of the deen, his love needs to be there. You cannot gain sacred knowledge without having an attachment to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa Because there is no individual more knowledgeable than him, whom Allah has created both if you look at secular education or if you look at sacred sciences. He is the one, salawatu alayhi wa sallam, who is the most knowledgeable. Because the Qur'an that was revealed upon him, salawatu alayhi wa sallam, it is the kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the fact that Allah chose him. And the Qur'an is what we call the minbar al-karam wal hikam. It is the focal point or the center of generosity and wisdom, wal ilm and knowledge. And within the Qur'an, there's guidance there for us and clear warnings that distinguish the difference between right and wrong. Hence, we gain knowledge from the Qur'an and then we're able to distinguish the difference between haq and batil, the truth and the falsehood. And this is all from the Qur'an. But the Qur'an was revealed upon him, sallallahu alayhi wa He encompasses the knowledge of the Qur'an. And the Qur'an carries the knowledge of everything and anything. Today, we've got... In America, for instance, there's a journal that gets published every month. And I just happen to come across it every month. 
for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's just there, and I just happen to read it every month. And in there, you will find at least, at least one line dedicated to the knowledge that they have discovered. Scientists have discovered. They have just discovered it, but the knowledge was already there in the Quran. They happen to discover it later on. And if you read that piece of knowledge or information that they give out, and if you have an understanding of the tafsir of the Quran, and usul of Quran, the knowledge of the Quran, and if you pick up the tafsir books and you read them and so on and so forth, you will find that it's already in there. So having an attachment to Rasulullah sallallahu and having an attachment to the Quran, what does it mean to have an attachment to the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi What does it mean to love him? How do we understand loving the Prophet sallallahu alayhi Brother, what's your name? Nu'man. Who is Ma'wa? Nu'man. Nu'man? MashaAllah. Brother Nu'man. Such a big brother, alhamdulillah. <laughs> but what do you understand by loving Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? By following his sunnah. SubhanAllah. Khalas. By following his sunnah. Sahih? Having an attachment to the Quran, having a relationship with the Quran. So holding on to the Quran and Sunnah. Holding on to the Quran and Sunnah. This is what is the foundation of gaining sacred knowledge in the deen. Now, I believe, inshallah, next Tuesday we're going to uh, go into this topic more or whatever, inshallah, is you know, whatever service I'm able to provide for you. You know, make sure you give me ample notice, inshallah. <laughs> <laughs> and check the weather. Check, check the weather. So, you must check the weather. So, <coughs> let's start with what does the Quran say about gaining knowledge? Or how does the Quran defy what is knowledge? In the Quran, you will find. That the Quran itself speaks about the Quran being knowledge. From the beginning of Surah Baqarah, we know that there is no doubt in the Quran. Sahih, it's guidance for those people who are taqi, who have a conscious awareness of Allah, who fear Allah, who strive to get close to Allah. Alladhina yu'minuna bil ghayb. Those people who have believed in the unseen, meaning believe in the celestial realm. We've not seen Allah, but we believe. We don't see the angels, but we believe. We know heaven and hell exist. We've not seen, but we believe. We know that the scales, the mizan, are going to be brought out on the day of Qiyamah. We know they exist. We've not seen, but we believe. So to believing in the unseen, believing in those things you've not seen, that is the highest pinnacle of belief. Believing in something you've not actually seen. Logic defies it as, you see it and you believe it. If you've not seen it, how can you believe it? So, but this is Iman, this is faith. The test comes about is, do you actually believe in something you've not seen in? And if you do, and you have true belief in it, this is real faith. So to have belief first and foremost, only then, does gaining sacred knowledge become beneficial for you? I know professors in Oxford and Cambridge, who, they don't uh, believe in the oneness of Allah, they don't believe in the message of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and alayhi. But if you ask them to recite Surah Tariq from the Quran, and I'm not talking about brothers and sisters who come from an Arab ethnic background, do you know what I mean? The names are, mashallah, beautiful names. But so it shows that they come from a Caucasian background. So, but they recite Quran better than some of the, our Imams in the mosques. Well, I've heard this with my own ears. We went to a meeting in uh, Oxford last year, and there was a professor there who teaches in the School of Divinity. MashaAllah. Teaches in the School of Divinity. And um, I, I found it somewhat ajeeb. Yani, I found it strange that, you know, uh, Dr. You, uh, you teach in the um, school of divinity, yet you don't believe in God. You, know, you don't believe, you don't have any belief, you don't believe in Allah. What, what, what do you teach then? You're teaching something you don't believe in? 
He said, when he puts a roof over the head, doesn't it? Puts food on the table, doesn't it? Pays the bills, mate. <laughs> it's got to be done. Now, subhanAllah, look at the difference between him and an alim, a scholar of the deen. Look at the difference. He, he could be teaching the same thing, sacred sciences of the deen of Islam. But the difference between him and the alim is the alim is going to get ajar in the hereafter. If his ranks are raised because he passes on the deen. As instructed by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, anni wa ayatan. Pass on from me even if it is one ayah, sa, one sentence, one rule in the last khutbah that he gave sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That professor was doing the exact same thing. He was teaching what they call, the, I don't know how to say it in English properly, the tafsir of the Quran. Exegesis? Ex Exegesis. Uh -huh, that one. <laughs> <laughs> of the Quran. Sa, and then he started reciting the Quran. And he was reciting like a Qari, bro. <laughs> I'm telling you. He was reciting. Mm. You could stick him in Regent's Park Smalls with a Jabba and a Imama in Ramadan. He could be leading Tarawih. You don't believe in it, though. You know? He could be leading Tarawih for you. He was half of the Quran. But no belief. So we find to have belief, firm belief. This is where gaining sacred knowledge becomes beneficial for you. Sorry. Um, you mentioned that the highest point of belief is to believe without seeing. Mm. Is, is that something what the nomus term blind faith? Yes. Now, if you, if you are someone who is uh, labelled as someone who has blind faith, I'd rather have blind faith than faith that is in a coma. So, because blind faith is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's instruction given to you, you do not question it. Allah says believe, you believe. We do not question. This is what it means to be a Muslim, to submit yourself willingly to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And faith in a coma, what I call is, well, you know, you're alive, but there's nothing there. There's no, in, there's no point in you living. Sahih? A blind person, even though they may not see with the eye, but there is a lot that can still can be done. A person in a coma, may Allah grant them shifa, those who are in comas, but what, and Allah knows why they're in that state, we do not question that, but what use is their life to anyone? So blind faith, if you're labelled as someone who has blind faith, I'd rather be someone who has blind faith than have no faith. Because what makes us true Muslims? What, 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 what's the difference between you? And someone who you're studying, in, brother, what's your name? Abdurrahman. Abdurrahman, ahlul wassalam, Abdurrahman. What are you studying, brother? I'm not a student anymore. Why not? I finished <laughs> it. I graduated. I was a student here. This university is wicked, man. <laughs> when we came in, I saw the building that I'm going to enroll here just to do a course. I love this building, mashallah. <laughs> what were you studying, brother? Maths and finance. Okay, you were studying maths and finance. Uh, I assume you must have our non Muslims on your course, sir. Now, no need to say the name, but just think of one person in your course who was a really, really nice person, but they were not Muslim. Sahih? I'm sure you can think of yeah. loads of people. Really nice human, really genuine human beings, really good people, but no Iman. This is going to sound very harsh now, but a person with Iman is still loftier in status towards Allah than a person without Iman. Sahih? The judge is Allah. The judge is Allah, but the fact that that individual believes in the oneness of Allah and the message of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they're a Muslim. What makes them a mu'min is the practice of that shahada. You take shahada, sir, and then you practice it scrupulously. You try your best, you strive, you pray your salah, you know, and through the blessings of salah, you, try, you become a good human being because salah, Punctuality in Salah saves you from heedlessness and shamelessness and things that make you go astray. So you give your charity, you fast in the month of Ramadan, you try to humble yourself before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you don't have uh, pride in yourself, you do not fall towards your ego, you try to purify yourself through the practices of the Sunnah, through the way of the Sahaba and, the compa and their companions and so on and so forth, Sahih? all of these things. But that individual who is not necessarily a, a good Muslim, but is a Muslim, is still loftier towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 